you have your Bible, you can turn to uh, Isaiah 53. We're going to uh, finish up Isaiah 53 today, um, looking at this great passage of Scripture. I, I, I'm taken to the point that uh, I, I truly believe it was written by Isaiah as if he were an eyewitness of the very things that happened that last week and everything, as if he stood at the base of the cross, as he was an eyewitness of everything yet that was there. Yet today, knowing what we know, we see even more. We can see the plans of God. We see the heart of Jesus as it has been fulfilled. He is the suffering servant. And more than anything, you can see the love that John 3.16 talks about. A love that can penetrate. A love that can make an eternal difference in any life. Just coming as we are. Just as I am. And letting God make of us everything that He so desires for us. If you have your Bibles, and if you would so choose to, would you just stand with us in honor of reading God's Word? We're going to begin in verse number 8 of Isaiah 53. He was taken from prison and from judgment. Who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. Why? For the transgressions of my people, God said, he was stricken. And they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief when you make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide with him a portion with the great. He shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul into death. He was numbered with the transgressors. He bore the sins of many and made intercession for the transgressors. He made intercession for me. He made intercession for you. He makes intercession for anyone if they would so choose to receive. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, your scripture is amazing. Your story is amazing. It cannot be limited by words. It is so much more. So and I pray that today that you would do that for us today. Would you do so much more? Would you take the written word that you gave Isaiah and amplify it? Holy Spirit, would you unveil it to our hearts and our minds and our thoughts? My Father, as you planned it, would you let us eat upon it today and digested in not only to our heart, but our soul and our whole being. Lord, we pray that as Jesus came alive, He first had to die. Lord, let us come alive, but may we choose to repent, to die to our way, and choose Your way. Lord, You're the God of life. Let life be with us today. You're the God of another chance, another day, another opportunity, another glance into your glory. Lord, let us come as we are, so unworthy but so grateful that you saw us in our sin and loved us the way that you do. So Lord, may this moment draw us near your throne. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You can be seated. Love is such an amazing word. It means so many different things to different people. 
Love is an open expression of the heart of God. But the word of love is so misunderstood. So many people say, "What well, this is love, or I love, or they shout out their obedience to say, yes, this is my heart. But yet, that can become so fleeting. It can be so small. It is just a tiny fraction of what true love is because the word love literally means to cherish. It means to cherish above all. And because of that love, and as we're drawn to the one that we so cherish, we knowingly, willingly, freely, and obediently place ourselves under the object of that love, our affection. It becomes first. It becomes preeminent. It dominates. It saturates. It makes us whole and complete. Love. Not simply affection. Not simply a desire. It is the complete facet of everything. We are immersed in that which is bigger and better that which continues and grows. Love one day that is true and real and saturated by God will always move forward. And how blessed we are if we have found one to love, truly love. No one makes us. We choose to bow before it. We choose to serve it. We choose to sacrifice for it. To the depth of it really doesn't matter. Whatever needs to be done, our heart says yes. 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 What love can mean depends upon the one that is loved. Maybe someone deserves to be loved. Maybe they don't. Maybe they have a good day. Maybe they don't. Maybe they can express truth. Maybe they, they're not. Yet, we are defined as being loved by the Almighty. Listen to me now, listen. That because He cherished us, because He valued us, because He saw worth in us, he placed Himself under us. The God of all, the Lord of hosts, served me, loved me, cherished me, gave to me boundless love. Dirty, rotten, stinking sinner that I am. And I have been. But by the goodness of God, I'm redeemed. Don't ever find yourself in that place where you easily look down and judge another, but not judge yourself. Don't let your pride take you there. How you can find negativity in others, but never see it in yourself. And yet, that is the human way of seeing things. But God knew everything everything about us, things beyond us that we don't even realize in our own self, and yet still cared in such a way and gave in such a way. Isaiah 53, amazing that shows the lengths of His love. Look what it says here in verse 4. Surely He has borne. He placed upon Himself our griefs. He carried. He placed it. He, he took them off of uh, ourself. And, and he, he carried our sorrows. It says in verse 4, He was smitten by God. We'll talk more about that in a second. He was afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised. For our sins, our iniquities. That word bruised, come on now, means to be crushed. 
in verse 10, it tells us that it pleased the Lord our God to bruise him, to crush him. When you think of the cross, if we could picture him there on the cross, bloody and bleeding, his skin tore off, his hands and his feet pierced, pushing up just to get a breath on the cross, the blood, that precious blood, falling to the ground, the precious blood that would cleanse us of all. And they mocked him. They cursed him. They spat upon him. They slapped him. They beat him. They made fun of him. They clothed him with robes. They put that crown of thorns and, and beat it down upon his brow. Yet his eyes only saw those that he loved. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. This is the God of eternity. This is the one who sits at the right hand of the Father. This is the one who makes intercession for us. Look what it says. The Lord, verse 6, the end of verse 6, the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted. Verse 8, at the end of verse 8, it says, He was cut off, the eternal one who became human, was cut off from the land of the living, freely for the transgressions of my people. He was stricken. Verse 10, he was, God has put him to grief. Yet Jesus was okay with that. It was his plan. How many of y'all look forward to a bad day? Anybody here have dread? You dread have you ever said that? I dread having to do this. I, I, you, you, you might postpone it. You might put it off. You might say, is there any other way? Jesus said it. In the Garden of Gethsemane, what did he say? Lord, if there's any way this cup can pass from me. By the way, the cup that we're about to drink of today. If there's any way. If there's any way. Yet. Not what I want. But I choose my love to, to serve others, to place myself under, and your will be done. It's the Father's will to love you. It's Jesus' desire to make it available to you. I could talk for the rest of the day. I could talk for the rest of my life and never be able to fully share the love of God. I hope you feel it. Matter of fact, Lord, would you, in some way, could you open us up to see and feel the expression of your love? I feel like we need to feel that expression. I hope that we would. It's like, Spirit, if you could put your arms of love around us and let us feel the warmth of your embrace. One glimpse in glory when we see his precious face, we'll know, and it will be a smile. A smile. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 says, Looking unto Jesus. Can you see him? Can you see his love from his eyes to yours? Looking unto Jesus, the author, the one who designed this plan to make us right and holy and just before him. And he's the finisher. He completed the task. He said the words on the cross, it is finished. It is done. <coughs> Nothing else needs to happen. 
who for the joy that was set before him, the joy of seeing you holy and complete, the joy of loving you, it was his pleasure to die in your place. It was the satisfaction of the Almighty to carry your burdens, to be crushed for you, to take your sorrows, the hardness of life. And no one can express that life cannot be hard. The weight of it. Who for the joy that was set before Him endured. Not just those hours on the cross, but from the moment that they planned and created, this was coming. It wasn't just the wait in the Garden of Gethsemane. It was coming. It wasn't just when Eve chose sin. It was coming. It wasn't just when Cain killed Abel. It was coming. It wasn't just murder and lies and theft and uncare. It wasn't just this pompous pride that we have that lifts us up. Pride has always been my Achilles heel. I believe as long as I breathe, it will be the, 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 the roots of pride in my life that, that, that I want to preserve something. But if I could just so get a glimpse of Jesus, it would be that He laid all that down and came underneath. He endured the cross, despising the shame. I wonder how many how it makes him feel when somebody hears the wooing of the Holy Spirit and they say, no, thank you. I wonder how it makes him feel when he's been there for all of us so many times and yet we doubt him. We don't trust him. I wonder how much of this word that we're not living, that we know but we're not acting upon. We have a choice, and yet we choose us rather than choosing Him. Despising the shame. I hate to say it, but until 21, I used to curse. God took that from me. I haven't cursed since I was 21 years old. But even then, when I cursed, I couldn't stand someone to say those words, God. And yet we, when we choose our way rather than His way, when we choose to put ourselves over another rather than under another, when we choose to want to be loved but we never cherish and serve someone else, but for the joy of the benefit of you, the cross was okay. I wonder what it must have been like in heaven. Revelation chapter 5 tries to give us a picture of it. When, when, when no one was worthy to come and, and, and take the, the, the title deed to our salvation, who can do it? And Jesus came like a lamb as though it had been slain and took that scroll and opened it up in life. You see, right now, we get the foretaste of glory divine, the Holy Spirit living within us. It's the engagement ring. It's Christ in us, the hope of glory. But one day, one day, and it will be soon, we'll get the full possession of it where there will be no hindrances, where there will be no problems. You won't have any problem being in heaven and, and, and walking around and loving someone in such a way. But what a glorious thing if we do it now. 
by choice. Such love through so much pain. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Paul says it as good as I've ever heard it. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. God's plan. It pleased the Lord to crush him because he saw the results. For the next 60 seconds, I hope you hear with your heart. Salvation is not just praying a prayer. Salvation is not signing a card. Salvation is not going up to be put into the baptismal pool. Salvation is seeing. Yes, by faith it's seeing. Salvation is believing in the one that I've never met in person. And I, don't, I not only believe, I trust Him completely. I know that He is who He is. I know that He has done what He said He would do. And I know He will complete what He said that He would. But I know that I'm a sinner. So I must turn from that. I must turn away from me and put myself under Him. And because that love has been placed within me, I must turn from myself and put myself under you. Anytime you see someone that is putting themselves on the same basis of someone else or higher than, you're not seeing that love of God. Please hear this. Salvation is repenting and following Christ. Salvation is re repenting and believing and living for Christ. Salvation is turning from our way and receiving His way. I think that it is respectful to come to God and say, I am a sinner. I sinned against you and I sinned against others. Forgive me of my sins. I know that you're the God of salvation, so forgive me and come into my heart and save me. I love these words. I tell everyone to say it. All my life, I give to you. I receive your salvation. I receive your love. I also, also tell other people, I say, when you talk to God, say this, may I never be ashamed of you. May I always be willing to serve you. And may I love the people that you love. Salvation is a transaction from your heart to His. So many people say, I missed it. I missed it. I, did I say the right words? Preacher, I'm not sure I said the right words. Listen, you know the heart of repentance. You believe in your heart that Christ can save you. And you come to Him and you ask Him to do for you. And in repentance, you live for Him. Jesus knew everything that He was going to have to go through and yet was willing. Verse number 12 says, He poured out His soul unto death. That's what a sinner must do. They must pour out their life. And the death of our way, so that we can have the beginning of a way of love with Him. I'm going to ask the ones who will serve the Lord's table, if you would, if you would come forward. We're going to partake of the, the juice that will represent the blood of Christ. We're going to um, take of that unleavened bread that is the symbol of the body that was broken for us. Can I confess to, to y'all? Y'all okay with that? Can I do it again? Many times I've come to this place and it was just an act. It was just something that we went through to my own detriment. Today I just simply want you to hold it forth in truth. When you take of that cup, I want you to think of that blood that was shed for you. Make it personal. When you take of that bread, 
I want you to remember the body that was broken for you. That sinless body that was not deserving of any shame, but how He took it for you. Oh, what a Savior. Hallelujah. He gave His life's blood for even me.